In today's video I show you how I got from this raw Spider-Man 3D print that was sculpted by Leandro Batista and is available on CG Trader to this epic statue. And every project starts with a good base. Since that was too big for my resin printer I printed that with PLA and used a bunch of spray filler to get rid of the print lines. Then I painted the whole thing with model air red and trimmed the edges with black before I used masking putty to paint the lower and upper ring with black. Afterwards I sealed the whole thing with gloss varnish and then did the final trimming of the web pattern. The good thing about varnishing it before is if you screw up with the black you can easily remove it with a wet q-tip or a bit of alcohol if the color has already dried. For the other part of the base, the small Spider-Man logo, I also used red first and then hit the middle part with a bit of white to get that color gradient. Then I used a syringe that I filled with black to get paint into all the small crevices. Then I glued it into place and the base was done. For Spidey himself I started with two different primers, grey for the underside and white for all the spots that are directly facing to the top. This way the red that followed next popped more on the top of the white than the undersides. At least that was my thought. For the red I masked off all the parts that will be painted blue later and gave the whole suit parts a coat of red. When that was dry I masked off the red parts and then used magic blue for the rest of the suit. Then it was already time for the logo on the back side. For that I used masking putty again and then created a white background for the red to pop. After removing the putty I had to trim the edges a bit and then the logo was done as well. To create a little bit of color variance I used gory red for the shoe soles and tire black for their profiles. And while painting this circle things, I realized it's really no fun at all to paint perfectly round circles. Luckily I came up with a really simple trick how to achieve that 100 times easier and nicer, so watch until the end. For the logo on the chest I used regular black and for the trimmings on the suit tire black. The stitching on his pants were painted with imperial blue. Afterwards I started shading with pastel colors However, the pastels I use kinda only work when you go darker If you use a color that is brighter than your current color, it doesn't really show anything So I use electric blue and the airbrush for some lighter spots on the legs And I did the same with hot orange on the red parts. Then I sealed everything up with matte varnish and painted the web with a black oil wash. I already uploaded a separate video that shows you how you can mix that yourself. Go check that out by following the link in the info box. After the oil color dried I used white spirit on a q-tip to dab away the excess and that left me with a perfectly crisp web pattern. And because I'm not the best at painting perfectly straight lines with a brush, I used masking tape to create a perfect straight and even trim line along his pants. Then I sealed all the blue parts with Green Stuff Max Matte and the suit was done. What was more tricky than the suit was the face with the mask half ripped off. I initially tried to do my usual wash process with red, yellow and blue, however that was difficult to dab away with all the crevices. So what I ended up with was just to use different basic skin tone colors and then doing everything else with red pastel. Then I actually messed up a small spot on the forehead where I had a little too much pastel that I couldn't dab away anymore, so I overdid it intentionally and used it as a bruise mark. With ivory white I painted the eyeball and then did another bruise mark.
Then I used my eye decals that you can get on my Etsy store, aligned it correctly and used decal softener to get a painted on look. For the eyebrows and hair I went in with different kinds of browns. For the lenses I used crepe tape, pushed that into the crevices really tight with a toothpick and then cut them out with a scalpel. Then I painted them completely black first, masked off the outer shape of the lens with masking putty, and then I actually used a cutout fishnet as a pattern for a honeycomb effect. So I sprayed white on top of the black and out came this really neat pattern. But because this was a bit too harsh, I used the same white to tone the pattern down a notch. Then I used the paintbrush to paint the outer part of the lens black again. And I simply repeated this technique for the other three head sculpts the model comes with. The last touch for the head was to paint the mouth, lips and eyeball with gloss varnish and a drop of UV resin on top of the iris. Now, this was a project where the prepping and painting of the base actually took more time than the figure itself. For those green goblin grenades, I used black as a base coat for bright bronze. And then I used white as a base color for a light effect with escorpena green. I finished them with a bit of black oil color for the weathering. And I will show you how I did the cloud effect in a minute on the other part of the base. I primed the main part of the base with gloss black, since black is the best color as a base for metal. So perfect for the third grenade and all the dog -ock tentacle parts. And because painting those curvy tentacles laying on my lazy Susan was pretty inconvenient, I switched over to the paint booth and painted them assembled. Now to the cloud effect. I started that with cold grey and used a small piece of paper as a mask to prevent overspray on the metal parts. Since this was not possible at all the spots, I also used the brush around the hard to reach areas. When that was done, I used black pastel for all the low spots. I sealed that again and then used light grey for the high spots. But since the gradient was not strong enough after that, I also used ghost grey for the high spots of the high spots. And since the contrast still could have been stronger, I used ivory white for the high spots of the high spots of the high spots. And then it started to get really crazy with all the details. So the model comes with five gripper arms. Each arm has three of those fingers, so I had to paint those tips 15 times. Make it 30 times with the second layer and two coats of varnish, so 60 times. The same goes for these inner parts, except they were on the outside as well, so double the double again. Then I painted these wires with red and black and gold for a little color change on the edges. Now remember in the beginning when I talked about how much it sucks to paint perfectly round circles, which I needed for these small details here. If you are already using my eye decals or have seen the video about them, you know that I recommend hole punching tools to cut them out. Well, you can also use them to cut out perfect circles from the masking tape. And then you can place it on top of the hole you need to paint and use the airbrush for a perfect round sphere. Now you can see each finger of the five arms has four of these circles. 
So if my math is right, that is 60 black circles I had to paint. You could visit me in a nut house if I had to paint that with a brush. And because that was not enough, we doubled the 60 circles to 120 because the black circles got gold circles in the middle. And with the same technique I redid the round shoe parts as well. To create a light effect in the middle of the gripper arms, I base coated them with white and then painted them with orange fire. Then white again, but only for a small dot in the middle and then yellow on top of that white. Then I base coated those little thingies on the side and cut out another stencil and airbrushed hot orange on top. Afterwards I just removed the overspray with a q-tip and alcohol. And now the real numbers come. To have a bit of color variation I painted each of those links with tile black. Each link has three of those thingies. In sum, and this time I really did count them, there were 232 of those thingies to paint. And since the color does not always cover enough after the first coat, I had to go over a lot of them a second time. And then I had 156 of those small red lights to paint. One important hint, if you want to print this statue yourself, go ahead and use Blender or Mesh Mixer to put rods into the keys of the tentacles that go up a bit further than those keys. Especially if you print it in larger scale, those keys won't be able to hold the weight of Spidey. I used a brass rod with 4.5mm diameter and 40mm length. And I even printed the tentacles hollow and filled them up with two component epoxy afterwards. If you don't know how to insert rods into the model, you can check out my video I did about magnets. It's the same procedure I used there. To seal the smoke effect, I used a mix of hand painting and airbrushing with Max Matte. And then the last step was to use UV resin on the tentacle light effects and the grenades because that creates much more depth than gloss varnish. And another 45 rounds of gloss varnish for the smaller light parts. And with that I called it good and it is time for the final reveal. Thank you.